In the early part of the year 1857, a mysterious human skeleton was discovered in a limestone cave in the Neander Valley in Germany. The skull was described in a paper titled On the Crania of the Most Ancient Races of Man by Professor Hermann Schaffhausen in 1858. Of the Neanderthal skull, Schaffhausen wrote that the extraordinary form of the skull was due to a natural conformation, hitherto not known to exist, even in the most barbarous races of man. The human bones and cranium from the Neanderthal exceed all others in the peculiarities of conformation, which lead to the conclusion of their belonging to a barbarous and savage race. The Neanderthal cranium must have given the human visage an unusually savage aspect. This aspect might be termed brutal, inasmuch as the prominent supraorbital border is also characteristic of the facial conformation of the gorilla, he concluded. The brain size of the skull was measured in the laboratory, and according to the paper, the cavity held 16,876 grains of water. Estimated in dried millet seed, the contents equaled 31 Prussian ounces. What's more, it is often suggested that Neanderthal's unique body type is due to metabolic adaptations associated with living in a semi-glacial and or tundra-like environment. However, research has shown that Neanderthals actually favoured milder temperate woodlands and grasslands rather than colder habitats such as boreal forests and tundra. In fact, rather than being cold adapted, one recent study argued that the short and stout Neanderthal body type evolved for sprinting in dense forests. Their large noses also evolved for short bursts of speed, and their large eyes were evolved for the low light conditions in the dark primeval forests of western Eurasia. Nonetheless, fluctuations in the Earth's orbit resulted in changes in environmental conditions, and thus vegetation patterns in Neanderthal territory. The last full interglacial period was around 125,000 years ago. This time is very important considering the many mysteries and unanswered questions about our big-headed cousins, the Neanderthals. This species appears to have undergone huge behavioural, cultural and evolutionary advances during this warm period. Indeed, this species seemed to have emerged from this period with smaller brow ridges, smaller jaws and overall more gracile features. In fact, they appear to have thrived during the last warm period. The last interglacial was one of the warmest periods in the past 800,000 years. The Eemian interglacial period was the world's penultimate warm period preceding the Holocene. This period began 127,000 years ago and ended 106,000 years ago. The Neanderthals thrived during this warm period and then their numbers declined until they went extinction 40,000 years ago. For about 10,000 years, average temperatures on Earth during the Eemian were likely several degrees higher than today's level. At its peak, sea levels were probably 20 to 30 feet higher than they are today. Scandinavia became an island after the area between the Gulf of Finland and the White Sea was drowned. Large portions of northwest Europe and the West Siberian Plain were inundated by rising seas. Melt water from the rivers Dnieper and Volga connected the Black Seas and Caspian Seas during a period that occurred between 133,000 and 130,000 years ago. This appears to be well documented in both ice cores and terrestrial records of land vegetation. The last interglacial is thought to have been even warmer than the current Holocene. Changes in the Earth's orbital parameters from today, greater obliquity and eccentricity, as well as perihelion, known as Milankovitch cycles, most likely resulted in greater seasonal temperature variations in the Northern Hemisphere. The temperature of the last interglacial peaked around 125,000 years ago before declining in the second half of the period. The warmest point of the last interglacial occurred when forests extended as far north as North Cape, Norway, well above the Arctic Circle. A study using soil samples from northern Finland discovered abrupt cold spells 120,000 years ago caused by shifts in the North Atlantic current which lasted hundreds of years and resulted in temperature drops of a few degrees and vegetation changes in these areas. Winter temperatures in northern Europe increased during the last interglacial, while summer temperatures decreased. 
hardwood trees like hazel and oak spread as far as northern Finland. Winters in the northern hemisphere were generally warmer and wetter than they are today, though some areas were slightly cooler. The African hippopotamus was found as far north as the rivers Rhine and Thames. Toward the middle of the last interglacial, a weakened Atlantic circulation began to cool the eastern Mediterranean. The period ended as temperatures steadily dropped to cooler and drier conditions than the present, with a 468-year-long aridity pulse in Central Europe at around 116,000 BC. And by 112,000 BC, ice caps began to form in southern Norway, marking the start of a new glacial period. These hunter-gatherers, also in northern Europe, started wildfires 125,000 years ago. According to the study, Neanderthals used fire to keep the landscape open, which had a significant impact on their immediate surroundings. Archaeologists have long inquired about the nature and duration of human intervention in our planet's ecosystems. New archaeological research has now provided important evidence. Along with a vast amount of information about the early environment, numerous traces of Neanderthal activity have been discovered. Investigators discovered the remains of hundreds of slaughtered animals, along with numerous stone tools and a large amount of charcoal. In fact, Neanderthal hunter-gatherers shaped their landscape by keeping forests open for 2,000 years. The traces were discovered in a forest area that existed 125,000 years ago. Elephants, lions and hyenas, as well as prey including horses, deer and cattle, lived here. The mixed deciduous forest extended from the Netherlands to Poland. There were lakes throughout the area, and traces of Neanderthal were discovered on the edges of some of them. When the Neanderthals arrived, the dense forest had been cleared, thanks in part to fires. The question of whether the forests opened because of the arrival of hominins, or because it was already open, is still being debated. Thus, these could have been natural wildfires or man-made wildfires, However, the study discovered enough evidence to conclude that hunter-gatherers kept the area open for at least 2,000 years. Comparative research has shown that at similar lakes in the area, with the same animals roaming but no traces of Neanderthals, the dense forest vegetation remained largely intact. The new research demonstrates that early hunter-gatherers shaped their landscape, and researchers are likely to discover additional evidence that hominins had a significant impact on their environment much earlier than previously thought. Despite the fact that Neanderthals are often portrayed hunting Ice Age woolly mammoths and woolly rhinos in the freezing tundra, they also hunted African hippopotamus and straight tusk elephants during warm interglacial periods. Indeed, Neanderthals hunted massive proboscideans to meet their nutritional needs. The researchers calculate that a 10-ton elephant could have provided at least 2,500 adult Neanderthal rations of 4,000 calories, consisting of a mixture of protein and fat from a single animal. These figures are significant because they indicate that Neanderthals, at least temporarily, congregated in groups much larger than the 25 individuals typically considered the maximum size of a local group, and or that they had cultural means for large-scale food preservation and storage. The analysis of finds from the Neumark Nord site in Germany also provides the first indisputable proof of active elephant hunting by early humans, changing our perception of Neanderthal lifestyle. Paleoloxodon antiquus was known for its unusually long and essentially straight tusks. Neanderthals hunted and slaughtered European straight-tusked elephants around 125,000 years ago, and their meat and fatty tissue provided an important source of nutrition. The now extinct European straight-tusked elephant was the largest land-living animal at the time, reaching shoulder heights of up to 4 metres and weighing up to 13 tonnes. The researchers conducted their zooarchaeological study using the world's largest assemblage of European straight-tusked elephant remains. Their findings, published in Science Advances, showed that Neanderthals formed much larger social groups than previously thought. Paleoloxodon antiquus roamed the landscapes of Europe and Western Asia 800,000 to 100,000 years ago. It was the largest land mammal during the Pleistocene epoch, which began three million years ago. Straight-tusked elephants were not only significantly larger than modern African and Asian elephants, 
but also larger than the now extinct woolly mammoth. The remains of at least 70 straight-tusked elephants were discovered during excavations. These remains had been well preserved for the past 125,000 years in the fine-grained lake sediments found there. This is the first clear evidence of elephant hunting in human evolution. Paleontologists carefully examined the extensive archaeological material. For them, the accumulation of elephant remains revealed an unusual pattern in which the mortality profile appeared anything but normal. The remains were almost entirely from adult individuals with a clear predominance of male animals. This pattern had never been seen before in fossil or living elephant populations, and it was difficult to explain. The archaeological analysis concentrated on how the wounds were distributed across the skeletal remains. The conclusion reached was that hunting of these Ice Age megafauna in this area continued for 2,000 years, spanning dozens of generations. Adult male elephants, which are significantly larger than female elephants, are overrepresented in the assemblage, most likely because, like modern elephants, male adult elephants kept to themselves. They were easier to approach than females because they were not protected by a herd. Because they were also much larger, hunting them would have resulted in much higher returns with significantly less risk. Hunting these large animals required close cooperation among the tribe members, as did processing which entailed extensive butchering, including the removal of meat scraps from the long bones and fat-rich feet. Processing may have also involved drying products for long-term storage by female members of the tribe. In another study, an international team of scientists reports one of the oldest, totally unambiguous hunting wounds recorded in human history. The wounds were discovered on the skeletons of two large extinct fallow deer killed by Neanderthals around 120,000 years ago along the shores of a small lake in eastern Germany. The study is a significant step forward in our understanding of the Neanderthal hunting niche. It demonstrates how Neanderthals obtained their prey, first and foremost through their much debated hunting equipment, while also shedding light on their hunting abilities. The researchers replicated the specific form of one of the wounds using an innovative experimental ballistic setup that included cutting-edge motion sensor technology. The findings support the use of a wooden thrusting spear that was impacted with low velocity. This implies that Neanderthals approached animals very closely and thrusted rather than threw spears at them, most likely from an underhand thrusting angle. Such a confrontational hunting style necessitated meticulous planning, concealment and close cooperation among individual hunters. The lake where the hunts took place was surrounded by a dense canopy forest, a type of environment considered particularly difficult for hunter-gatherers, including modern humans. Interestingly, excavations in the area have yielded tens of thousands of large mammal bones, including red and fallow deer, horses and bovids, as well as thousands of lithic artefacts from this uniquely rich last interglacial lake landscape, demonstrating Neanderthal survival in forested environments. Wooden spears were used to hunt big game like mammoths, elephants and woolly rhinoceros. Mousterian toolkits frequently have very different contents from site to site. Some researchers explain this by claiming that different groups of Neanderthal hunters had different tool-making traditions. Although hominins most likely began hunting with weapons more than 500,000 years ago, there was no evidence of how wooden spear-like objects found at Clacton-on-the-Sea in England, as well as Schöningen in Germany, were used prior to the discovery of these hunting wounds. In terms of spear use, we finally have a crime scene that matches the proverbial smoking gun for Neanderthal hunting ability. The researchers leave the exact type of hunting technique open to debate, but emphasize that these are socially and cognitively significant findings that help us understand the range of variation in Neanderthal behavior.